these segments of lectures, we are looking at uh, the uh, definitions of strain and uh, some examples of uh, uh, derivatives which are useful uh, in describing the nonlinear response of uh, materials, uh, looking at nonlinear rheology or rheology at large deformations. And uh, we are also uh, uh, quickly uh, going to review a uh, couple of nonlinear models. So, we have already defined uh, the strain and uh, we saw that how strain reduces to infinitesimal strain tensors for uh, small deformations, but for arbitrarily large deformations, uh, the overall uh, finite strain tensors should be used. Uh, when we use, uh, when we work with largely uh, fluid like materials, uh, quite often strain does not appear uh, in the overall uh, governing equations. Uh, only when we look at the integral uh, type models, then the strain might appear in the overall governing equations. However, if we are working with solid like materials and if you recall, uh, we had discussed a uh, standard linear solid model where strain was involved in the overall uh, governing equation. So, in such cases, if we are looking at uh, the overall model for large deformations, uh, we will have to replace the small infinitesimal strain tensor which is valid for small deformations with the finite strain tensors that we defined. So, therefore, uh, generally in uh, rheological discussion, the overall uh, finite strain tensors uh, may not be as common as uh, they are in let us say discussion of uh, uh, nonlinear response of solid like materials. So, in this uh, lecture continuing on, uh, we will uh, define the uh, convected rates and then uh, look at uh, uh, some uh, examples of nonlinear models and then finish up with uh, the overall governing equation for Gesekas model as well as its response. So, let us uh, look at the convected rates uh, as we had uh, looked uh, earlier uh, the uh, given that uh, the overall uh, description of the material uh, for uh, deformation or for rheological analysis can be done using convected base vectors and convected coordinates. And so, when you evaluate the rates of change of these quantities in the convected frame, uh, they are related to the derivatives that we otherwise know. So, for example, uh, uh, the upper convected uh, derivative which is uh, indicated usually by this uh, triangle which is inverted. Uh, we, I, I, we should also remember that uh, depending on the source that is being used, there are multiple uh, uh, notations which are possible and uh, so one should be careful in terms of uh, looking at uh, what the, is the derivative and uh, look at the notation and its relation to one another. So, this is one of the commonly used notation, but not the only one. So, the overall convected rate of stress is related to the rate of change of stress with time alone. And then uh, this is like the convective term which is there in the Navier-Stokes equation also or the inertial term that we call. This is rate of change of tau uh, with respect to the position uh, itself, the gradient. And uh, this term arises as we have seen in acceleration also. This is these two terms put together are the material derivative. And then finally, some terms which are related to the deformation in the material. So, if the material is not deforming, gradient of velocity would be 0 and therefore, in that case uh, we will not, if we want to evaluate the rate of change of stress, we will not have any contributions due to these terms. So, these two terms put together are the terms due to convected rate. And so, uh, to summarize again, the overall convected rate is uh, based on the rate of change of uh, stress with time rate of change of uh, stress with uh, position and then uh, contribution to the convected rate based on the deformation that is that the material is accounting for. And uh, given that we had seen that there are two uh, sets of uh, base vectors that could be defined in convected coordinates, we had seen that we could uh, define either the covariant or contravariant base vectors. Uh, they, therefore, we also have uh, covariant or contravariant derivative. Uh, if you recall, we had also called these uh, set of base vectors as one set was called tangent base vector and the other one was reciprocal base vector. So, therefore, we have two possibilities of defining convected rate also. Generally, the upper convected uh, uh, rate is far more common in case of rheological analysis uh, 
from a mathematical point of view, uh, there is no way to choose one over the other as to which is more appropriate. It is through experience and through our working with uh, models and its description and comparison with uh, whatever are the uh, results uh, for specific materials, we choose one or the other. And we have found generally that up the upper convected uh, models uh, seem to give results which are uh, more according to our experience in terms of rheological response of real materials. Uh, but uh, lower convected uh, derivative can also be defined and uh, again it has uh, three similar terms, uh, rate of change of stress uh, with time alone, rate of change of stress with due to spatial variations and then uh, the uh, contribution to the convected rate of stress due to deformation in the material. Uh, it is also possible uh, to define other uh, nonlinear uh, other derivatives which are also frame invariant. Uh, each of the derivative is based on uh, uh, slightly different physical uh, interpretations. So, these are uh, what we have defined in this slide are convected. However, we could also define uh, uh, for example, a co-rotational derivative. <coughs> in fact, uh, you can also construct these derivatives by uh, combinations of these derivatives. So, if I add these two or if I subtract these two, I can get alternate set of derivatives. So, therefore, uh, if we add the two, then we get what is called a co-rotational derivative because instead of the velocity gradient, what is involved here in the uh, terms which are due to deformation of the material are the spin tensor uh, or the rotational and that is why it is called a co-rotational uh, derivative. And so, this derivative is also frame invariant and can be used. So, therefore, uh, what we have is the wherever we in linear models, we had the partial derivative that ha if has to be replaced with one of these nonlinear frame invariant derivatives for us to get a model which can describe the nonlinear rheological response of materials. So, generally if we look at the types of models uh, which are there uh, to describe the nonlinear rheological response. Uh, we could think of these models in terms of uh, what is the overall form uh, of the governing equations. So, generally there are two broad type, uh, one is the rate type equations or the differential models and then we have the integral models. Uh, the idea in rate type models is to say that at each and every instance of time, how are the rates of different quantities and quantities themselves are related to each other. So, for example, Maxwell model that we have seen. Uh, where we just uh, wrote it in terms of stress and stress rate related to strain rate at each and every instance of time is an example of a rate type model. We also saw that the Maxwell model can also be written in an integral form. Any uh, differential equation can uh, be transformed to an integral form and similarly a rate type model could also be transformed to integral models. Uh, depending on the overall development of the model itself, Sometimes uh, based on the physical arguments that are being made while developing the model, we may end up getting integral model as the beginning stage. And so therefore, a corresponding differential form can also be found from the integral form. So generally uh, depending on the history of uh, how the development of the model took place, uh, we have some of the models which are more commonly used in the rate type form and some other models which are used uh, more in the integral type form. For example, uh, the Maxwell model uh, more often than not is used as a rate type model. Uh, so, upper convected Maxwell model we will see is an example of a rate type model and it is also an extension of a linear viscoelastic model. So, linear viscoelasticity we used Maxwell model quite extensively. If we replace the partial time derivative with upper convected derivative, we have the extension of uh, linear viscoelastic Maxwell model to a nonlinear uh, viscoelastic model called upper convected Maxwell model. Similarly, we will also look at another example of a rate type model which is Gisekas model. On the other hand, we have uh, several integral models and uh, one example is large network model which uh, happens to be an integral uh, form of the upper convected Maxwell model, but uh, in originally when it was derived, it was derived as an integral form. Uh, one uh, most uh, commonly known uh, integral form of uh, uh, governing equation is to account uh, for reptation in polymer melts. 
So, given that macromolecules are uh, uh, entangled with each other and any description of rheological response of a polymer melt uh, requires uh, description of uh, ent entanglement and reptation of the uh, macromolecules. Uh, to account for the reptation, uh, Doi Edwards developed a model which is an integral form model. And so, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, quite often uh, we may have a model which uh, has both uh, integral or uh, rate type uh, expressions. Some other times it is not possible for us to transform them based on the complexity of the equation. So, when we say form of equations is important, uh, this is only for us to know the phenomenological basis for how the governing equations were arrived at and also intuitively for a given rheological problem, we may choose one over the other uh, depending on the application. Uh, the other thing that uh, we could sort of uh, look at uh, is in terms of how is the uh, model motivated and how was it derived. So, if it was derived based on continuum and phenomenological macroscopic arguments, uh, then uh, we will have uh, one type of arguments and leading to the overall governing equation. Uh, the same governing equation could also be reached uh, starting from a microscopic or molecular picture. So, in one case we use continuum mechanics, in the other case we use uh, statistical uh, mechanics or uh, molecular theories to uh, arrive at these equations. So, quite often uh, it is important for us to traverse back and forth between uh, these two types of uh, models or these two types of understanding to get the overall picture. It is important for us to look at the continuum scale and uh, look at the overall macroscopic behavior because for many engineering applications we need that. However, at the same time since uh, many of the physical mechanisms uh, are at the molecular and microscopic scales, it is important for us to understand the uh, material constitution as well as material response at the molecular or microscopic scale. So, generally we use both of these approaches to try to uh, uh, understand the overall rheological response. Uh, in the, this course uh, so far, we have uh, focused mainly, mainly on the continuum and phenomenological uh, description of rheology. Uh, for advanced learners, uh, it is very important to look at the microscopic and uh, molecular response as well. So, now looking at the upper convected Maxwell model, uh, since we are quite familiar uh, with uh, the overall uh, Maxwell model. Uh, which we have used several times in the course so far. So, we have been uh, the one dimensional version of it, we have been always writing it like this as uh, this is let us say val valid for uh, the simple shear case. And uh, so, uh, when we write the upper convected model, what we are doing is this time derivative which is partial derivative has to be replaced by convected rate. And uh, so, the just to remind ourselves the three dimensional version of this model will be just where we replace the single component model with the tensor and uh, therefore, this is the overall 3 D version of Maxwell model. But this is uh, valid only for small deformations because the rate quantity which is being used which is the partial uh, derivative of stress is only valid when we have deformation small. Uh, however, for a convected Maxwell model, what we do is we replace the partial time derivative with the convected rate and in this case, this is upper convected Maxwell, uh, upper convected derivative of tau and therefore, this becomes the upper convected Maxwell model. And so, uh, given that the upper convected uh, derivative itself uh, is uh, algebraically complex, the overall governing equation of uh, the Maxwell model therefore, now becomes uh, algebraically more complex. Uh, if you look at it uh, in the bold face notation, uh, it is very similar to the Maxwell model itself except that we are using the convected rate. So, we could again in this description uh, physically intuitively say that uh, Maxwell model basically relates stress and stress rate to the uh, overall uh, strain rate tensor in the material. And given that there are 9 components, we can write each and every component and for example, in this uh, slide we have written the uh, y x component uh, which would be very important for many of the simple shear type of deformations in the material. Uh, 
And uh, these two terms are of course, uh, from the uh, earlier uh, Maxwell model itself. Uh, this is the uh, inertial term uh, which arise uh, when we have uh, material derivative being incorporated and you can see that uh, this is now variation of stress with respect to position. So, that is why we had said earlier that this is variation of stress with time alone and this term uh, incorporate variation of stress with position or spatial variation of the stresses. And then the uh, last term which is the convected rate uh, contribution uh, due to deformation itself. So, if uh, any of the velocity gradient terms are non-zero, then only this term would contribute. Of course, we know that if lambda itself is 0, then we have only the Newtonian fluid model and in that case, uh, the overall convected rate itself uh, is not immaterial and the stress is only related to the current uh, value of the strain rate tensor in the material. So, therefore, uh, we can now uh, use this uh, overall governing equation instead of uh, using the Maxwell model that we have done and the results of this model will be valid for arbitrarily large deformations. Now, going on uh, we can look at the integral counterpart and we had seen earlier that uh, the Maxwell model could be written in integral form uh, using a relaxation modulus. So, if you recall uh, g into uh, exponential t minus t prime by lambda is nothing but the relaxation modulus and if we integrate this equation by parts we can uh, get the overall stress in terms of strain. So, we have one integral statement where we define it in terms of strain rate. The present value of stress depends on present uh, uh, the integral of uh, strain rate which the material is subjected over all the history. Similarly, by integration by parts we could arrive at the present value of stress as a function of past history of strain that the material has been subjected to. And uh, this gamma y x is only valid when deformations are small and so we replace this uh, infinitesimal strain tensor component in the three dimensional version with a strain tensor. So, this is now the uh, large network model which is uh, integral form of uh, the upper convected Maxwell model and one can show that this form is equivalent to this form. So, this is the differential form of the model and this is the integral form of the model. But we choose to call it large network model because the origin of uh, its derivation uh, are integral and uh, large network model is a specific case of a large rubber like liquid model where instead of if you instead of the exponential uh, relaxation modulus which is due to Maxwell model, if we use any other form then we have what is called the large rubber like liquid model. So, now going on uh, we will finish up uh, by looking at an example of a nonlinear model. Uh, Gesicke's model has been uh, very useful in terms of uh, nonlinear rheological response of materials. Uh, originally it was again derived for polymer solutions. So, therefore, it can be used for a specific uh, set of materials. Uh, we have discussed in uh, course uh, worm like micellar systems, supramolecular systems and uh, polymer solution. So, many of these systems Gesicke's model is a good starting point. Uh, it is a good starting point for nonlinear rheological response because it has uh, all the uh, reasonable uh, uh, response that is expected from a nonlinear rheological response of realistic materials. We have seen earlier that if we look at this upper convected Maxwell model, uh, it shows uh, in fact no shear thinning or shear thickening. So, viscosity is constant in steady shear. Similarly, we saw that the normal stress uh, difference for upper convected Maxwell model was proportional to strain rate squared. While we know that uh, the proportionality is uh, not at all related to gamma dot squared, but it is far more complicated. So, therefore, upper convected Maxwell model shows certain features of nonlinear response of uh, materials, but it is grossly inadequate. On the other hand, uh, Gesicke's model uh, seems to have uh, a reasonable set of uh, nonlinear responses, which uh, many of the realistic materials also show. Uh, originally, it is derived uh, in terms of polymer solution. So, the overall hypothesis was that uh, there is a stress contribution uh, in terms of solvent uh, 
and there is a stress contribution in terms of polymer and uh, both of these added together give us the overall stress in the material. So, now the question is to derive uh, each of these and uh, the uh, contribution due to solvent is uh, just a Newtonian contribution where eta s therefore, is the solvent viscosity. The polymer contribution which includes uh, viscoelastic response is uh, uh, basically related to the upper convected Maxwell model. So, if we say for the time being ignore this term uh, and say alpha is equal to 0, then you can see that uh, the polymer contribution here tau p plus lambda 1 times convected derivative of tau p is equal to 2 eta p d will be nothing but the upper convected uh, Maxwell model of tau p. So, uh, basically uh, what uh, this uh, model incorporates are uh, the mechanisms of stretching and orientation uh, of the macromolecules. So, whenever a, a polymer solution is being deformed, uh, the macromolecules can stretch and macromolecules can orient and therefore, we have uh, the uh, upper convected Maxwell model of polymer contribution stress arising. Now, additionally we have uh, the term which is due to uh, what is called the nonlinear term where alpha is the most important nonlinear parameter. In fact, it is called the nonlinear parameter because if alpha is 0 then the overall governing equation reduces to the uh, Oldroyd B model. Uh, this governing equation will reduce to upper convected model this uh, is already there. So, when you add the two we get what is called the Oldroyd B model and again Oldroyd B model is only uh, a very qualitative descriptor of the overall rheological response. It has uh, many of the same limitations as the upper convected Maxwell model. However, the Gisicus model response is realistic predominantly because of this nonlinear term. And so, for non-zero values of alpha, we have uh, the overall uh, stress appearing as a non-linear term effectively stress squared. So, this is like saying tau squared terms which are there. And the origin of uh, this term was based on the fact that uh, when we have stretching and orientation of a macromolecule, uh, the drag that it experiences, uh, there is an anisotropy in it. So, if you uh, remember, uh, we have been uh, talking about Stokes law uh, and drag for uh, macromolecule, what macromolecule experiences and so between the solvent, solvent and uh, the overall macromolecule, uh, we have uh, the drag and uh, because of stretching and orientation. So, if we have uh, stretching and orientation basically the macromolecule uh, ends up being uh, uh, a much more anisotropic object and therefore, now the drag which is experienced by uh, this macromolecule will be uh, have to be found out for an anisotropic uh, object and the term due to alpha is uh, due to this. So, alpha is called the nonlinear uh, mobility parameter or the nonlinear parameter itself. Now, uh, when we substitute the value of tau p and tau s in this equation and simplify, we get a algebraically complicated uh, governing equation for Gisicus model. And in terms of uh, overall uh, uh, description of these terms in words, we can see that stress and convected stress rate in combination with the nonlinear uh, uh, stress square term and uh, stress and uh, strain rate uh, multiplicative term is related to the strain rate, convected uh, rate of strain rate and strain rate squared. So, now this uh, is evident uh, enough for us to see that how Gisekas model is an example of nonlinear model. Uh, the convected rate of course, contains nonlinear terms but we additionally we have nonlinear terms which are uh, involving stress squared, we, they are involving multiplication of uh, strain rate with uh, stress, we also have convected rate of strain rate itself and then we also have uh, multiplication of strain rate with itself. So, you can see that the uh, parameters are uh, 
eta s lambda 1 alpha eta p. So, these are four parameters of the overall uh, Gisekas model. Uh, sometimes it is useful to rewrite uh, some of these parameters in terms of additional more parameters. So, then we have eta which is eta s plus eta p lambda 2 lambda 1 and a as the overall set of uh, parameters using which we can use we can uh, uh, describe the Gisekas model. Uh, given that uh, these models end up being uh, algebraically very complex, uh, sometimes they are tedious especially to an uninitiated or if you are not familiar. So, the best way to get familiar with these is to actually work with these models and see their response. So, for example, in class we had seen earlier that uh, if you want to see the response of Maxwell model to let us say stress relaxation then we say that strain is constant and therefore, we substitute that value in Maxwell model saying that gamma y x is constant and therefore, gamma dot y x is 0. So, similarly what we will have to do in uh, each of the case for Gisikas model also is to substitute uh, the working condition. So, let us say if it is steady shear then we will have to say that uh, since it is simple steady shear only d y x will be non 0 d x x and everything will be 0. And that substitution here we will give, give us a governing equation for components of tau and then those have to be solved for us to get the overall response of Gisikas model. So, this is the overall uh, description of uh, the Gisikas model in index notation and we can see that it is fairly complicated. And so, each and every term uh, one has to carefully uh, calculate if we have to work with the Gisikas model in general. And uh, so, we will finish up by looking at uh, the components of Gisikas model for simple shear. So, here uh, d y x uh, is uh, related to gamma dot y x as we have seen in the class earlier. And so, the overall governing equation for Gisikas model we still have four uh, uh, terms of uh, stress tensor which are uh, non-zero. We have seen that for, uh, for any general viscoelastic material uh, in simple shear flow we can have four components the three normal stress and the shear stress non-zero and therefore, we have governing equation for tau x x, for tau y x, tau y y and tau z z. So, it is these four equations which have to be solved uh, depending on what is the uh, d y x that is being imposed. So, if it is a simple uh, steady flow then d y x will be constant. If it is stress relaxation then d y x will be 0, if it is uh, creep then uh, tau y x will be constant and we will have to solve for d y x and also strain. So, therefore, uh, uh, these set of governing equations are for simple shear alone. Analogously, we could find the governing equations for extensional flow or any other flow for which uh, a Gisikas fluid or a material which is described very well by Gesicka's model uh, response can be derived by such equations. And uh, looking at the overall response of uh, 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 some uh, of these uh, uh, some of these uh, examples. So, looking at steady shear response we can see that the Gesicka's model response describes shear thinning. There is a Newtonian plateau in the beginning of the uh, at low strain rates and uh, so therefore, uh, this is quite useful for many of the polymeric system and uh, as uh, the strain rate increases the overall uh, uh, material is shown to exhibit shear thinning behavior. And uh, alpha which is a nonlinear parameter uh, as we have seen that when it is 0 uh, it will lead to in fact, no shear thinning and as uh, alpha increases more and more shear thinning is shown by Gisekas model. So, Gisekas model shows uh, more and more shear thinning when alpha the nonlinear parameter is higher and higher. And uh, the, the first normal stress difference also uh, in terms of the coefficient is a function of strain rate itself. Remember that for upper convected model or for oldroid model the uh, stress uh, first normal stress different coefficient is constant. So, only when we have alpha non-zero we have actually first normal stress difference again varying as a function of strain rate itself. Uh, 
and again this is qualitatively observed for many of the polymeric system. So, the Gisicus model describes both shear thinning as well as variation of first normal stress difference uh, qualitatively uh, reasonably for many polymeric systems. If you look at stress growth in uh, steady shear, again uh, we have a very reasonable response from Gisicus model. At very low strain rates, we have uh, the predominantly exponential type increase uh, of the stress growth viscosity and whenever we go to higher strain rates, then we have this stress overshoot and then reaching the steady state. And uh, if you look at the steady state values themselves, you can see the uh, apparent uh, shear thinning also because for low strain rates, the steady value which is reached is much higher and uh, when you go to higher and higher strain rate, you reach lower and lower values of steady state viscosity. So, therefore, uh, Gisicus model is very useful in terms of describing the nonlinear response of uh, various uh, uh, materials and uh, familiarity with it would involve working with uh, the governing equations uh, which we showed in terms of index notation and simplifying them for a set of uh, uh, specific uh, rheological characterization. So, with this we have uh, reviewed uh, the overall uh, nonlinear uh, uh, models which are useful for uh, the characterization of rheology of uh, complex materials. Uh, however, we should remember that these are very simplistic models that we have discussed. Uh, even though they happen to be very complex algebraically, there are far more complicated models which are useful in today's world to describe the rheological response of materials. Uh, there are of course, also a set of models which only are uh, developed using microscopic uh, theories or in terms of computer simulations. And, uh, those uh, the discussion of such models is, will be there for the advanced learners. So, with this uh, we will uh, now close uh, the discussion related to the nonlinear uh, response of uh, complex materials.